something that always annoys me about other people when they send me tracks to mix or I see other people uh, at work on a DAW is they don't name things properly. Um, they're kind of sloppy in that way. They don't have any consistency. Um, if you look at something that I've done here, I'll just show you a just a sample <clears throat> session here. Um, these are just the raw audio files for this particular track. Um, everything has a kind of code. So, for example, anything that's a backing vocal will start with VB. Um, anything that's a lead vocal is VL, you know, GE for guitar, and it just keeps everything in kind of an alphabetical order. And I think, you know, what you'll find as you work on more and more songs, and especially if you're in a, um, a situation where you're working for other people on a, in a professional capacity, um, you need to be that organized. Uh, you can't have a bunch of files on your computer called Guitar 1 and Guitar 2, you know? You can't have, um, you know, a file name that is uh, Audio 24 um, in every one of your songs strewn all over your computer. So I'm very, it's, you know, as you get more professional with it, and especially as you're working with other people, you need to keep things in some kind of order. The other thing I do on that note is every song has a code. Now this is kind of especially important for me. As you can see, I'll have these channels here called D slash KI kick, um, which means in this song, there'll be a track called D KI slash kick, or space kick, sorry. Um, and the next song will have that as well. So what I'll do for every uh, song that I work on is I'll create a little code. Um, going back to one of these files here, um, for example, this band is called Between Kings. Uh, their song's called Alibi, so the code I have is BK Alley. And now I will append that to the end of the name of every file so that each of these files is its own unique file. So it will never, Cubase will never get confused as to uh, which file goes with which song. And of course, it's kept in its own folder and you know organized in that way. I think the other thing that people don't know, I mean, there's there's actually a way to do that on a global basis that I've only recently got to grips with. It's this thing called the Project Logical Editor. Um, now, there's this thing can do tons of stuff, and to be honest, I'm not really across everything it can do. But one thing I've found it can do is it can select every audio channel. So if I want to add Stuart to the end of every audio channel, I select my little add code, do that, and there. And now you'll see that every channel in the project that's an audio channel has that code, which means that, you know, it will have its own unique uh, code for this and Cubase will never get confused. It just helps you keep your files organized. So all of that naming um, and all of that organization is a real pain to do session by session, but if you kind of work a template as I do, it's kind of all done, so it's fairly effortless.